Let's take a look at parallel lines. So here you see we have a graph, and you can tell just from the picture here that these two lines are clearly parallel. And let's write the equation for both of these lines. So for this first line over here, you can see the slope is about 2, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So it's going to be y equals 2x, and the y-intercept is going to be at 4. So y equals 2x plus 4. For this line, we're also going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So the slope is also going to be 2. So y equals 2x, and the y-intercept is negative 2. So y equals 2x minus 2. So what do you notice about both of these lines. Well, you notice that the slopes are the same. So the slope m is the same. And the y-intercepts, b, the y-intercepts are different. And this is true for all parallel lines. They have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So, knowing that, if I give you the line y equals 3x plus 1 and say write a line that is parallel to that. Well, we have to find a line that has the same slope and a different y-intercept. So, it has to be y equals 3x, but the y-intercept could be anything. So, let's just say y equals 3x plus 2. These two lines are parallel. If I give you y equals negative one-half x minus three and say write a parallel line to that, it's going to be y equals negative one-half x and once again the y-intercept can be anything. So let's do minus a hundred. So these lines are going to be very far apart on the graph because you're going to have a y-intercept of negative three here and the negative one hundred is going to be way down here. But even though they're very far apart, they will still be parallel. How about y equals x? What line would be parallel to that? Well, the slope of this line is 1. There's a 1 in front of this x. And the y-intercept is 0. You can also imagine it being a plus 0. So we need a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of anything, anything other than 0. So we can say y equals x, so y equals x plus 1. So we have the slope of 1 for both of these, but the y-intercept here is 0, and the y-intercept here is 1, so they are parallel. Now let's try a horizontal line, straight across horizontal. y equals 3. Well, let's think about this. If we have a horizontal line, y equals 3, we want to find in order to find a line that's parallel, we want another horizontal line. So a horizontal line is y equals anything. So we can do y equals 1. y equals 3 and y equals 1 are both horizontal lines, so they are both parallel to each other. Same thing applies to vertical lines. If we have x equals 9 over 2, that's a vertical line at the point where x equals 9 over 2. So, because it's a vertical line, every other vertical line is parallel to it. So let's do x equals negative 2. So you can pick any y-intercepts that you want. And for these horizontal vertical lines, you can just change the numbers to anything you want. The important thing is that for these your slope has to stay the same in order for them to be exactly parallel. Okay, let's try something a little more challenging now. So now I'm going to say I want to find a line that is parallel to this line here. And I also want that new line to pass through the point 0 comma 1. So remember when we're talking parallel lines the same slope so we know that the slope is going to be 
negative 2 in the new line. But what about the y-intercept? Well, let's look at this point right here. It has to pass through 0, 1. What is 0, 1? Well, remember, if x is 0, that means we're on the y-axis. And so on the y-axis, the y-intercept is the y-coordinate right here of 1. So the y-intercept is 1. So from this, we can very easily write the equation of the line, y equals negative 2x plus 1. All right, now I'm going to give you one where you cannot just easily recognize the y-intercept like that. Let's say I want it to be parallel to y equals 4x minus 3 and pass through the point negative 4, negative 7. So, we know that we're going to have a slope of 4 here. But what about the y-intercept? Well, let's plug this coordinate pair into y equals mx plus b. So we're going to have y of negative 7 equals, we know we want a slope of 4 times the x of negative 4. And we're trying to find what the y-intercept is, so plus b. So this becomes negative 7 equals negative 16 plus b and b equals 9. So we have a slope of 4, y-intercept of 9. This will be y equals 4x plus 9. So again, what we did here was because we want something that passes through the, this coordinate pair, we substituted that into y equals mx plus b, and we already knew what our slope was, because we know since it's a parallel line, the slope has to stay the same. Okay, now let's try, let's try a line that is parallel to y equals negative one-third x minus seven, and passes through the point negative six, negative five. So again, we know it has to pass through this point, so we can use that to substitute into the formula. And we know it has to have a slope of negative one-third. So we're going to have y equals m times x plus b. So this will be negative 5 equals 2 plus b. b equals negative 7. So slope of negative one-third, y equals negative one-third, x, y-intercept of negative 7. But there's a problem here. We just got the same equation that we started with. So what that means is we did not find a parallel line. We found the exact same line. And obviously, since it's the exact same line, it's not a parallel line. So there is actually no solution here. There is no parallel line with, there's no line parallel to this line that passes through this point because this point passes through the line we're given. Okay, now let's try a vertical line. We want a line parallel to x equals 12 that passes through the point 7 comma 8. Now let's think about this. Since it's a vertical line and we're going up and down, that means the y could be anything. Since it's vertical, y can go really goes from all the way from infinity to negative infinity. So we just ignore the y here. But we know it has to pass through a point where x equals 7. So because we started with x equals, a parallel line here would be x equals 7. We know it has to pass through the, a point where x equals 7, and since it's vertical, that means that x is always going to be 7. Just like in the original, x is always 12. In the new line, x is always 7. 
Now when we go to a vertical line, y equals negative 1, and we want a line parallel to that that passes through negative 5, negative 3. Now here, this is a, I'm sorry, this is a horizontal line. So since it's horizontal, that means x could be anything. So we're going to ignore the x here. But we know that it passes through a point. The new line passes through a point where y is negative 3. And since it's horizontal, that means on that new line, y always has to equal negative 3. So y always equals negative 3. We literally just write. You just want to think it through, and then it's pretty simple. OK, that's about all we can do with parallel lines. So next time, we're going to be doing something very similar, or essentially just the next step here, which is perpendicular lines.